Next up, we have Mark Abbott from Wolseley, who will explain how Wolseley embraced uh, the concepts of X XLAs to help improve team performance and deliver a better and more holistic customer experience. Now, I'm quite excited about um, this presentation because I spoke to Mark um, right at the beginning of their XLA journey. Uh, so I'm very excited to see how far they've come. How are you today, Mark? Hi, Scott. Yes, I'm good. Thanks. And yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, good. Good. OK, thanks for that introduction. Yes, I was going to mention that as we go through the, the slides as well, that we've uh, we worked together on this before. So I'm hoping, guys, um, we can build on a lot of the um, presentations today and certainly from Scarlett's slides earlier that we can show you the other end of things in terms of how our journey's been and how we've implemented some of the best practice that has been highlighted. So thanks for that. OK, so so my name is Mark Cabot. I'm Service Operations Manager at, at Wolseley. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background first about who Wolseley are. Um, all started back in the 1800s with a guy called Frederick York Woolsey, who was a, um, the, kind of the, the originator of the company, and that started sheep shearing, really. Um, the company then changed more into manufacturing and distribution, but really in the kind of late 1950s to, to today, really focused much more on plumbing and heating. Uh, and that's our core business model at the moment. So really we are, as it says on there, we're the leading distributor of plumbing and heating products for the business. So many of you have probably been into Woolsey branch if you want in a replacement bathroom or radiators and taps and so on. Um, but we operate in lots of other um, industries as well. And you can see some other business units that we have on screen there. We have about 5,000 colleagues in the in the UK and trading out of primarily those 500 sites that we, we, we trade from. So uh, we have distribution centers and regional area offices as well, but the core of our, our kind of business is based on our, the, the branches. So to us, those colleagues are our internal customers. So we don't directly deal with external customers. We have contact centers that do that, but our main um, support provision is through the um, through the internal branches. So as Scarlett's already referenced, so how do we start our journey? So a couple of years ago, we um, saw one of the white papers that um, Scarlett had um, published. It was coincidentally during the meeting looking at KPIs and how we could get better at reporting. Uh, so it was kind of perfect time. It was almost a bit of a light bulb moment for us really in terms of what we what we read in that. So we took a step back and said actually yes this is exactly the kind of things that we should be looking at. Um, and it, it was you know very much aligned to that our thinking at that time. Um, it's probably worth just saying in terms of um, SLAs which I'm just going to move on to now. We We've never really had formal business agreed SLAs. We did on one or two many years ago, but essentially it was more the, the, the generic system um, level SLAs. So, you know, out of your incidents and requests from your service management. Um, but it was something that we, we kind of recognise that is still important and needs to be measured, but doesn't necessarily give you the full picture uh, of everything. So we really looked at what, what was wrong from an SLA perspective, not just Wolseley, but the wider business. Uh, and here's some kind of a, the kind of a examples of what we identified your know, targets being set too high so you'll always have a challenge with customer expectation as i've alluded to in our example business might not even be aware of what an sla is never mind have you got something agreed against a particular business service um potential bad practice from a service desk perspective which you know really is you know cherry picking or closing things too early just to make you look good from an sla perspective um which which is not exactly what what's wanted um, what we also saw was really that, you know, the, at that time, industry um, was changing towards what metrics were really being measured. Now, traditionally, we've we've always really looked um, closely at customer satisfaction. So similar to a lot of the guys today, in terms of measuring a, a survey on the back of a call being resolved, we've done that for many years now. And frankly, we've always been really high on that. So we've had a reasonable response rate with kind of 10, 12 percent response rate. And we're around 95, 96 for for quite a while but we realized that was just one part of the picture it was good and it was a good perception and a good view from the feedback that we'd get but it was only one part of it and it was potentially in isolation to some of the other measures that we we have in place so it was clear that we needed to look at a bit more rounded um view of a service that we were providing to our business so i'm not saying that slas shouldn't shouldn't be there at all and again i think scarlett you referenced this earlier but you know slas and xlas actually complement each other well and i've been both to give you to, both together does give you that full view, so that's important. Again, similar to uh, that's part of a um, the white paper that we looked at, and again, Scarlett, I think you've highlighted some of this already today. That it's not just about the customer satisfaction; 
actually a lot of people were focusing more on that actually than than some of the traditional metrics that that we get used to today really so it was clear at that time as we started to build our picture together and what we wanted to do that we've got to look a little bit wider than we've always done as also mentioned earlier the watermelon effect so the graphical view this time of that um so sla is all looking great green on the outside but actually you delve a little bit deeper actually not not so good what is the actual customer view of that again because we've never really presented kind of sla reporting to the wider business for us it was all around looking at ourselves and you know from a senior management perspective being able to be clear on how our service desk and the, some of the wider teams perform for us really it was being able to say what does that look like again we've typically been quite strong on incident and request sla um adherence but again that's just driven from from the system but that's just a perception thing not necessarily the actual experience that customer we're getting for, for those so it's really important that we we look beyond that so again just to recap on some of the key benefits of, of xla so it is that whole customer experience and it's really you know driven from a service desk as jeff was saying that starts starts from a, the the beginning there in terms of those and how they you know the team perform uh, and meet each of the different kpis that is a driver for so much of what you see within a within an xla and what we've really seen as well is that actually that time so it's, it's a it's a real balance of quality and quantity getting the time and space to be able to look at how we can resolve a call more effectively potentially even resolve two things in, in one so you know we, we often find some of our um, customers have two or three things they want to cover at one time um, so they'll say, oh, by the way, can you help us with this? By the way, many, many years ago, we had that 15 minute limit and it was it was clear then, you know, that, that just wasn't the right way of doing it. So we really tried to give that extra quality to what that, which in turn has a, has a positive impact on the customer experience. I appreciate that's obviously depends on how much resource you've got and, and time, but that's something that we've really thought was an important thing. So we, we changed that slightly and really made sure that people had that little bit more time to work on that. And in turn, it has an improvement on the, the overall service. Uh, and that key point there, the last one, really, the behaviour, yeah, that, that drives, but, it, but we're doing positive behaviour there. We're not trying to circumvent stats and KPIs just to tick a box. So the real concept there is you're moving from a kind of melon, um, watermelon, to a, a kiwi, so green all the way throughout was our kind of um, way of thinking about that. So when we looked at that white paper and looked at that kind of what was going on wider in the industry, there were some key things that we it was clear that we needed to put in place so one of those was to look at the metrics that we really need to get in place have some appropriate weighting because not all metrics need the same level of weighting again as we've we've seen earlier today do some benchmarking so again we did a little bit of that but we also just look primarily back at our own stats over a period which i'm going to move on to in a minute and then the output of a lot of that was a balanced scorecard so again just hopefully highlighting from what's already been said today that that is definitely a very valuable thing to do and, and put in place. We, we saw in terms of the key things that the measure industry were measuring were on those most points there and that really well aligned to what we already had. But as I said earlier, we, we were doing some of that in isolation. So we were looking at first time fix, right? But we weren't kind of putting that together with all the other things. So we were not looking at that, that whole piece. And that, that really, again, made it clear to us that we, where we needed to put our efforts into bringing this together into one overall view of those. So in terms of what we had to do or what we thought we would do, it was kind of build on, on from that. So really look at kind of those core measures uh, and look at how we can put the appropriate weighting together and then look at what that overall score would be for us. So that's an example of one thing, again, similar to what Scarlett showed earlier, but that's really then we evolved that into, from our perspective, the key measures that we wanted within Wolflet. Um, and that's, that's a list of those that we've, we've got there. And then just to show you how that looks built into a, our own scorecard. So this is really actually May to date. So we've kind of um, looked at the very latest figures and what, what we have at the moment. We put together some appropriate weighting for what we thought was, was right for each of the different areas. Um, put a little bit of definition as well, which is an important thing to be really clear on, on what it is that you're trying to um, measure. Um, and so everyone's understanding of that particular metric is the same how it's been defined and behind this we actually have a little bit more information that says you know what is a source how we're going to find that information and what will it what will it give us in terms of the overall measure um so in terms of the weighting that we put you can see the best possible score is is that so those all equal uh, 100 and we really felt that customer satisfaction was still up top there 
along with first time fix. But again, as, as Scarlett was alluding to, you know, some of the maybe lesser metrics still make up part of the picture, but maybe not as important as some of the others. But actually all joined together, it still gives us a clear view of the kind of things that we, we want to go after. So that, that's a kind of figures for May. I will go through the, the same things that were mentioned earlier about averages and lowest and highest, but there's some information now in terms of how that's done. That's also in the, in the white paper. Uh, and then a slightly different view of that. So this is kind of how we look for the last six months, a bit more of a graphical view in terms of, of that. We've kind of, it, one thing to mention with Excel is really is it can be peaks and troughs. And we've seen that a little bit over the, over the last few months. Uh, this February dip was very much around some major incidents. We had some resource challenges. So that is obviously a key factor, not just what does your customer satisfaction measure look like? There's lots of other um, elements to that. But we, we have seen that over the couple of years that we've been running this, um, it will dip, um, peak and trough really and, and lots of dips. And, and actually at the moment we're in the, we're in the peak and that wish is something that we're really hoping to build on now and, and keep at that higher level. Okay, so in terms of what we've been um, doing and where we are, like I say, it was, it's a couple of years just coming up now that we've, we've actually formally looked at that. So we took, when we first saw this in kind of March 2019, we took that time to really map out and look at our, our own stats before we fully launched it. But we actually then launched in the August period. Um, what we did in particular was to look at how we measure each of the service desk analysts to see actually how we measuring the right things for them from an individual and from a team perspective. And what would be the better way of actually driving the right targets and the right habits for those guys and actually giving a, a assistance to the overall XLA and that was something that you know, actually worked really well because all the service test analysts were bought into that and we presented to them what our aims were and they could cle clearly see what we, what we were trying to achieve so it wasn't to try and make them do things that they weren't appropriate just against ticker box it was doing the right things and it, it all it all kind of made sense so that that was a great help um, but everybody was on board from the beginning there as Scarlett alluded to, we, we, alluded, uh, we spoke with Scarlett and the team at the SDI to look at how we kind of first saw what the white paper was about, saw the benefits of how the um, XLA is going to be applied. And that was, you know, that was good because that validated to us that I think we we're on the right lines and we were doing doing the right things. Um, I think that also highlighted us we were probably one of the early adopters, as I would say. Um, again, I know there's a lot of other companies that were around that time thinking about it from our conversation with them, but we hopefully that we actually grabbed hold of that and, and built on that um, and have done, you know, have done well in terms of what we were doing there. We also spoke with several other SDI customers and some other just internal local companies to where we are actually just to share our experience and journey. Some of those actually were a little bit heavy in, in some ways in terms of how they were measuring it and what the definitions were. So that was really interesting to see where we could go in the future. Um, as they just saw on the last couple of screens, we put a scorecard and actually a dashboard in place. So the scorecard being typically what we'd be looking at on a monthly basis, but a dashboard for a real-time view of how we're performing at any given point. So as you saw there, I think the figure that you saw 82.4, that was as of yesterday. So as a, at any point, our team, uh, anybody in IT can actually go and look at that information and see. So again, just part of the buy-in and getting people involved and, and seeing what we're trying to achieve. If we were back in an office environment, that would have been on the screen and we'd have been kind of promoting that to anybody who's in the, in the office space, but it's in a remote working environment, something that people can still click on a link and, and see as well. An extension of that really was that we, we got senior management buy into the approach. So our IT director from the early days was really supportive of what we were trying to achieve. So that was a big factor in, in, in what we do. So we, we sit down with him monthly and review that. Um, understand why that that's maybe low one month and why in particular something's gone particularly high so other things that can be then fed back to the to the wider business as appropriate leadership team meetings can highlight and say actually no we, we did struggle because of x y and z or no we're doing really well at the moment and this is a big this is a big reason why that's really enabled lots of good conversations of uh, over the over the period that gave us a platform to present that to the wider it team as well so We've all I'm coming to it in a minute, but what we've always had a vision of is that this goes beyond the service desk. But the starting point was always going to be the, the service desk team. So we presented in I think about eight or nine sessions across the rest of the teams, about 150 people in IT that we have. And we, we brought that down into small groups and just 
presented. So not just telling them why an XLA is good, but actually what could they do to support it and, and get their help in that. And they went really well, well, well received across the teams as well. So that was definitely a positive experience for, for us. We, over the last few months, we have uh, changed our service management tool set. So again, a lot of the learnings that we had from that were factored into um, the tool set change. So for example, around how we do customer satisfaction. Um, again, similar to a lot of what people have said today, we, we've again we've we've all essentially had a one question survey, but that was on a link on an email that you click in and go elsewhere to to then fill in. We've changed that now, so we've just got the three faces, you know, awesome, good, and dissatisfied are essentially the um, the three measures that we have, and that's been a lot easier because people have been able to click and respond a lot a lot simpler. That's actually increased massively our response rate and our the actual um, the the rating as well. So we've gone up a few percent. We've actually more than double the, the throughput that we've had on that, which is really good to see. Uh, we've done work around knowledge to make sure that that's easier. So from a, a self-service and a shift left perspective, that's that's improved, which in turn has helped our first time fix, which again comes back to the XLA. Uh, and then the reassignment count, which is really around how calls get bounced between teams, make sure that the collaboration across our teams is that bit better and that we're engaging with those teams that the service desk work with more closely just to make sure that that actually reduces the amount of times that calls are passed between teams so that that really has made a, a big difference in terms of that um, our next step really is to roll out to the to wider it team so very much the similar measures that i've shown you already but looking at adding a few more in so for example mean time to resolution is an obvious thing that we've we've kind of honed in on now in terms of that time it will take for a call to be passed between teams how do we actually reduce that and what and what is good which is quite a challenge in itself to define what, what does good look like in that space. But there's general agreement that is definitely an area for us to focus in on. Um, so that, that's the next step for us. So we've got some comms that we're working through at the moment with the aim of rolling that out in, in June. And then beyond that, really, it's it's all about how can we refine and improve it further. So we, we've done a lot more work in terms of um, automation efficiency. Um, as Dean said right at the beginning of the day, that proactive approach of contacting users and understanding why they're not using that service, why they're giving us negative feedback, why they're not even respond, et cetera. Can we work closer with the with teams to understand a bit more about the, their expectations on our service? Um, building on that chatbot capability that we launched when we were um, going live with a new tool, all these are real enablers and it'll help us to kind of build on that overall experience, which should be framed within the XLA for Mark. And then lastly, just to kind of give you a bit of a sort of best practice guidance is what we call it. So as part of that move to our new service management tool, um, we put together a few kind of the basics really in terms of what we're really expecting from everybody else, which is almost, a, this is a bit of a, a prerequisite to launching out the, the wider IT XLA. So I'll, I won't read through every single one of those, but just to give you a couple of examples of, of this, I think this is something you, everybody can take away and apply in their own um, businesses as, as appropriate. Again, it's, it's very much the basics, but some of these all done together will make a significant difference in the overall XLA experience. So one of the examples is just speaking to, um, you know, our other teams speaking to the end user. There seems to be a perception when we've talked to a lot of our teams that they almost always pass the call back to the service desk. So that in itself would drive a lot of uh, increases in reassignment count. But actually, we really said, no, no, everyone's more service focused nowadays. Please speak to the user yourselves wherever you can. Don't, you don't need to pass that back to the service desk, and that's really necessary. And that's driven a lot more uh, emphasis and improvement in that space as well. Um, tickets reopened, we've tried to make that easier for our end users to be able to do. So hopefully that's, it's, it's almost counterintuitive, but it gives the ability for people to easily reopen calls if they need to. But if we get it right first time and put some clear details on the ticket, make sure that that you know that information which is visible to users in self-service is really pertinent and, and and accurate rather than very much technical language there won't be a need to reopen it in the in the first place anyway and really just encourage that ownership of calls and making sure that people put as much information and get the quality right rather than just speedy you know done on as a resolution and that's it because that's that's not going to achieve anything really and that's been a, a big difference for us in terms of that so as it says at the bottom those small marginal gains can actually make a big difference is, is really true certainly in our experience anyway in terms of how we can we can make those improvements to give us a better overall customer experience 
and that was that was it from me guys so hopefully you found that useful i've just put my email address there if anybody does want to get in touch I'm more than happy to kind of share our journey and experience with people like we've done with a, a couple of the, um, sdr customers um and hope you know for us it's all around sharing what we've done and if other people can benefit from that great that's brilliant thank you mark um, I really like hearing about real life applications of XLAs uh, and I think your presentation covered that beautifully. <laughs> uh, we've got a question from Tracy. Uh, she asks, how did the wider business view XLAs and was there any reluctance? Uh, there was a little bit in, in some areas and it was, it was maybe as much because they were just not as, not as service focused perhaps what i would say so it's very much you know i guess probably the more common technical teams that you would you would be familiar with you know, in terms of a, a network and telephony team and so on it was a little bit more well, we do our thing and this is how it is but but it hadn't joined the dots to kind of them doing their bit rolls into the wider experience and customer satisfaction and i think once we've had those conversations certainly as part of those wider it teams but we deliberately did that mixed in mixed groups actually face to face in a you know a big 20 seater meeting room it started to open up quite a lot of good conversations so just doing that as in itself is was a positive but it, it really helped people to, to actually yeah I, my piece in this jigsaw is this i can go away and, and build on that but we haven't got all the answers yet it's not all perfect but that was certainly a, a how our, our experience was okay brilliant that's all the questions I have for you, Mark. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you You're have welcome. a brilliant rest of your day, rest of your week, rest of your month. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Carl. Same to you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Okay, we're a little bit early, but um, as long as our final speaker is ready, our final speaker of the day is Dana Alrenga from Slap5, who will be talking about how capturing the voice of your customer can help you to measure the impact of your team and help drive internal and external customer voice initiatives. How are you, Dana? Hi, hello. Great Hi. to be here. All right. You able to see my screen okay? Yep, perfect. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, thank you for, for having me. And this um, is going to be a little bit a uh, little bit different than um, I guess what some of the other kind of presentations and, and what you've heard is something new um, that I'm talking about today. And uh, my name is Dane Alvarenga. I'm the director of customer experience at Slap5. And Slap5 is actually a um, a marketing SaaS tool. And we capture the customer voice and infuse it into every aspect of the organization. 